TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live, but by the time you see this, we won't be, man, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where you can catch any of the highlights. Yeah, Faulty Towers was one for sure. Um, we also got merch. Got mine on. <laughs> And we also got Patreon. This is Monday through Friday, man. We post on Patreon what we cannot watch on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? The lineup is lit. We about to actually replace Fresh Meat. Fresh Meat is almost over, so we got to vote for a new show. Make sure y'all tune into that, man. This is HMP style, style, style Women Behind Bars prison documentary. Okay. I ain't watched a prison doc in a little minute. This is an hour. Let's the countryside near the posh suburbs of Manchester is one of Britain's most notorious places. If you visit Style, it's something of a shock. HMP Style, a prison which may look like a village. It do look like a little town. But it's far from it. I would say that Style Prison was probably the most challenging place that I have ever worked. Here, you'll join the worst women in Britain. The real bad girls. There's a lot of murderers, oh, child killers, pedophiles. You'll be living alongside mothers who kill their own children. Here's a place in which some monsters lie. One person. Yeah, make sure we never watched this. Rachel Tunstall. She killed her own child and put it in the bin. You'll be in a wing full of drug dealers and drug addicts. Six months in, I started taking heroin. Once crap came into me life, I could never really move it a stretch. You'll be in a cell next to inmates battling severe mental illness. I've seen women try and take their eyes out. They used to swallow razor blades, swallow batteries. You can be walking up the wing and all the blood will be seeping under somebody's door. And you'll be confronted with more death than in... I'm not gonna lie, swallowing a razor blade? Like, talk to me. That gotta be one of the worst pains out there. Any other female prison. She died in the care of the stuff. Of Start the show. The mother of all prison. Home to around 400 female convicted criminals. This is HMP style. Located just outside Wilmslow in Cheshire. This is a prison like no other. Style is what I would say a unique prison in terms of its layout. We had cellular accommodation, what we called weight wing, but then we had a lot of open accommodation a on dorms? the house units. If you visit Style, I'm talking about dorms. They got house units? You go to jail, you get placed in a two-bedroom, two-bath? What's going on? It's something of a shock, because it looks for all the world like a housing estate. Except it's got this big metal fence around it. That look like suburbia. The house is a large, detached Victorian. Y'all remember, uh... What was that show we used to watch? Oh, Walking Dead, when they was in, um... When they finally found that town. It was the, the nice houses and all of that, and they put um, a fence around it. That's what this looked like, just to keep the zombies out. Houses, got beautiful gardens. You've got the woodlands surrounding. There are little tree-lined walkways. It's a village. It's a tiny little, lots of village greens, in a way, between the blocks. I remember the prisoner coming from Durham. When she came to style, she got down onto the grass to stroke it, to kiss it, and she actually asked the question, is it real? People think of a prison, they think of it as big, bleak, and behind huge fences. Style isn't really like that. It, it looks a bit more like Butlin's. Look nice. But Style's reputation precedes it and new inmates will start to hear rumours within minutes of arriving. It is a place in which some monsters lie. Some of Style's notorious inmates include Fazana Ahmed, who along with her husband, suffocated to death their 17-year-old daughter.
because she refused to accept a forced marriage in Pakistan. Tracy Andrews, who famously stabbed and killed her fiancé Lee and attempted to persuade the world that it was a road rage attack. Tracy Connolly, a mother I never knew the story who caused or allowed the murder of her toddler, Baby P, in a case that horrified the nation. And most recently, one of the most hated female killers in British criminal history. I heard the story Savannah about Brockhill, her. Savannah who Brockhill. Who beat to death 16-month-old Star Hobson. But you don't have to be a murderer to end up at Style Prison. Only about 15% of the inmates of Style have committed violent offences. They are not all murderers or indeed murderers of their children. The majority of women in Style are actually minor offenders because unlike male prisons, Style does not distinguish between a category A prisoner and a completely, in a way, not very significant I wonder why crime. Not. They're all lumped into one. That could be dangerous. You've got anything from people that have committed the worst offences all the way to shoplifters, habitual drug users, sex workers. The reason they're lumped together is that only 4% of the entire prison population in, in the United Kingdom is women. Oh, OK. And so there aren't enough to justify separate institutions looking at less significant offenders against very significant offenders. It's easier and also probably more financially sensible yeah. to put them together. That makes sense. Whatever your crime at style, you'll be processed in the same way when you arrive. A female prisoner will arrive uh, in reception. You'll get patted down for drugs and weapons and whatnot, and you have to sit on a, it's called a boss chair. The boss chair, which is a body it's orifice security scanner. It checks to see if you've got anything inserted, any metal, anything like that. And then she begins the processing. Take her photograph, her height. You'll be given clothes that other inmates have left behind. I know that one of the um, governors goes to Crime Mark every month and buys a load of leggings, a load of tops and a load of shoes. And you'll be given them. If they haven't got them, you'll be given second-hand stuff. And then when they finish with her, she'll go to what's called the First Night Centre. And then you're in their hands then. If you think about walking... Hand-me-down prison clothes? Yo, my... Like... Y'all not worried about pat like yeast infections passed down or, or or old spillage or anything, pH levels being thrown off from sharing or ain't nothing, huh? Get into prison for the first time, you know, it must be quite shocking. I'm not a woman, because so I don't even know what I'm talking about. Because all stripped away at that door immediately. You know, you can't open a door without somebody. You can't go to the toilet without being let through. You can't eat at a certain. It's jail. And uh, whenever you want, you know, so everything, and, and that is the punishment, is losing your freedom. After your first night at Style, you're ready for your first day. If you move into one of its 16 communal houses, you'll live like a family, with women who've committed a range of crimes. You could even end up sharing a bedroom with a murderer or paedophile. The houses are self-contained units. There'd be a kitchen and a living room. Yo, bro, come on. I, yo, this is a whole apart. This is nice. This is, what would Dale say? This is cushy. What a lovely jubbly. What's going on? And then sort of dormitory style accommodation. The door would be unlocked in the day. Women could come and go to and from work on their own. And they would have freedom to wander around at night time as well. You've got people who volunteer freedom themselves to do the who are in charge of cleaning up. You've got to work together to make the house work, obviously, but sometimes it just doesn't work. The house units definitely promoted a sense of community, but it's... It's... They got brown sauce on the table. They try to blur it out. We know that's brown sauce. That's HB brown sauce. Definitely promoted a sense of community, but it's in your face communal living. I hated the house experience. There's about 17 girls to a house. It's completely bitchy. Sometimes it's a Bro, this looks like sober living. Like, you ever had to, like, go to, like, rehab, and then you get out and they put you in, like, a sober living house? Like, if you're a woman, it's all women. And, or if you're a man, it's all men. 
Like, this looks like that. Or in Florida, they got houses like this where you can rent a room and it's communal. This this is what this looks like. This don't even look like jail. There's a lot of bullying going on. Sometimes you get people who think they're top dog of the house, they own it. The gossip and the, the backbiting and the who's done this and who's done that and the arguments over drugs. Mostly it's all words, it's all threats getting shouted across. But it does come up to fights. Women, by their very nature, are much more hormonal than, than men. We all know, you know, Talk about the it. time of the month. Um, and if you've got sort of 90 women all at the same time, then, um, you know, it can be a little bit fraught. They're much more likely to lash out quickly. So they can be rather sort of unpredictable um, to manage. I would say that style prison was... It's like bad girls club. Go ahead, put a little camera in there and just record. It'll probably be a lit TV show. I'll watch. <laughs> probably the most challenging place that I have ever worked um, in terms of the complexity, the incidence of violence, self-harm, the emotional... Besides this real stuff. Like. ...distress that goes along with um, dealing with the women. I would say they're prone to, to, to more violence, whether it be between each other or, or on themselves. As your first full day ends at style, you'll learn that some inmates who've committed the most hideous crimes are often separated from the rest of the prisoners for their own protection. Oh yeah, I, I would imagine. I've seen women on the wing being assaulted. A couple of people have got done with hot boiling water and, and sugar. sugar. There is a prisoner code and they are seen as the lowest of the low. Most inmates at Style live in the communal houses, but if you baby are a high profile baby offender, baby. you'll be sent to a unit for prisoners oh, yeah, 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 who yeah, require yeah, stricter okay. supervision. Wait wing. It's basically a big wing, two levels. There's about 80 cells on each side. It was a um, 23 hour bang up. You could get out for an hour association at night, and that's when everybody did what they needed to do shower, make phone call, and that's it. It's a dive. Because obviously there's a lot of women who are coming in who are detoxing. It's women with mental health problems and there's a lot of paedophiles. There's a lot of murderers, child killers. The state of affairs on the wing itself was just disgraceful. I mean, mattresses full of blood. Uh, I caught scabies off the mattress. Um, there was nip combs in the shower. I caught scabies? I swear I thought that was only... That's a real thing? What is scabies? I thought that was like a Spongebob created something like... All right. My bad. Full of nits. I mean, it was dirty. It's disgusting. That's how it was back then. Hey, Siri. What is, what is scabies? Scabies is a contagious skin infestation by the mite Sarcopti scabi. The most common symptoms are severe itchiness and a pimple-like rash. Do you want me to keep reading? No, that's good. Got it. I mean, people will be walking down the landing and throwing up because they were rattling. Weight Wing houses women who've committed the most heinous crime of all, killing a child. Mm. It's where one of the prison system's most despised inmates recently started her 25-year life sentence baby P's mom, right? for murder. That's her, so right? Brockhill is a former bouncer, security guard, boxer, who formed a relationship with a younger woman no, called Frankie no. Smith. And Frankie Smith had a daughter called Star. Savannah Brockhill no, described her, herself okay, once memorably bad. as number one psycho. And she had a habit of threatening to kill almost anyone. And she beat up Frankie Smith on an absolutely regular basis. Brockhill lost her temper relentlessly and eventually started to take it out on this 16-month-old little girl called Star Hobson. Finally, uh, killing her by what the judge later described as a kick or a punch equivalent to a high-speed car crash. 
It was also discovered that little 16-month-old had earlier injuries, including a broken ankle. Brockhill took some pleasure in her notoriety. She positively pre- Is the mom in jail too? Because she continuously let this go on. Like, that gotta be a jail sentence too, don't it? And in the dock, she loved being a psycho. And finally, uh, Brockhill was convicted of the murder of Star Hobson. And when she went to Style, she was segregated. She has to be. Them as a mother that missed their kids. High profile kids. killers like Brockhill are kept apart from the rest of the inmates for their own protection. Anybody coming into prison who had murdered um, young children are treated very badly. That is the worst crime that can possibly In a women's be prison, committed. yeah, for sure. And female prisoners just do not tolerate it. There is a prisoner code, and they are seen as the lowest of the low, and they are a target. Especially child killers like Savannah Brockhill, what she would cop for if she came off that seg. In a phone call from inside prison, one inmate recounts how Styles' women reacted to Killer Brockhill's recent arrival. We all seen it on the news. We were more shocked to see it, but then to have the actual person be actually thrown into Styles, everyone was at the window. Where else was she gonna go? How many like, how many women's prisons are there? Like this is this is the one. Everyone was screaming, shouting, but lucky enough, that's a fact, the GS. There's a lot of women in there that can't see their children, that, you know, have, have lost their children because of things that have happened and then we're mixing with women who've killed children or raped children you know it, it's it's not good especially with women because they're so protective as, as mums and stuff i mean there was one woman there who was in for they had a dead baby skeleton in the wardrobe and they tried to put her once on a house that i was on and she didn't last half an hour she was off yeah, Nobody would have it, you know. I mean, how can you have a, a skeleton of your baby in a wardrobe found in a bag? Myra Hindley. Myra Hindley. At one point, uh, there were rumours that Myra was going to come to Style Prison, and the anger within the prison that Myra might come, um, they were plotting what they would do to Myra, so and you, so they were watching death. This is how you know the prisoners really run the system. <laughs> they run the jail. Anyway. Can't nobody go in there without them, without their approval, you know what I'm saying? Make sure Myra Hindley They're gonna did make not it commit terrible. to stand. Despite efforts to segregate the most notorious prisoners, the rest of the inmates will always find a way to get at them especially if they've committed the worst crime of them all. I think they find the killing of a child by their mother even more horrifying. Somehow, matricide is the worst of all possible crimes. They should be there to protect and nurture, to treasure their children and the fact that they choose. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, that's why I, like women that can be absent in their kids' lives, period, like, I'd never under, like, that's wild to me. So the fact that you can just, Emma Child, like, anybody, though, but anybody, but, like, it's the ultimate, like, weirdest thing that... Used to kill them. More than weird, it's overly... Beyond imagination. Right. I was on there with Tracy Connolly, Baby P's mum. You know, ah, here we what go. She like what she like because obviously she's she's so well known. Most of the time, we would get opened up before her, 
and Tayton's let down for dinner and then we'd be banged up before she was let out. What they've done is so horrific that if you can tear them at any opportunity. You know? I wouldn't like that as a prisoner. I'd feel like they're getting special treatment or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, why I gotta, why they get to go eat by themselves? Like, I'd be on 10 in there, turning up, bugging out. I've seen women on the wing being assaulted. They put cockroaches in their bed. Spitting in food is done quite a bit. It's just about finding the horriblest thing you could put into somebody's dinner. <laughs> a couple of people have got done with hot boiling water and sugar. One person I was on the wing with, Rachel Tunstall, she'd killed her own child. I think it was pretty soon after giving birth in the toilet. I think she put her in a bin bag and put her in the bin. She got a hard time. 26-year-old Rachel Tunstall was a psychology graduate with a master's in forensic psychology. She claimed she'd had a miscarriage, but was convicted of murder, having stabbed her newborn baby around 15 times with a set of scissors. This is what I'm talking about. There's a clear mental issue going on because there's so many avenues for women or for anybody to be get, just get, like drop the baby at a fire station or something. Why would you do that? You don't want your child, okay, yo, there's plenty of things to do. That is wild. <laughs> so she's doing 17 years. 17 but, is not enough. But to look at her, she was just like a really quiet, frightened mouse who just looked so innocent and so naive and gullible and just not really cut out like, for prison. Put it up for adoption, do so. I don't know, when you think of a child killer, you don't think of some quiet, introvert, a person, not a confident person. So then you've got to look and think, well, maybe there was something really okay, yes, you do. that tipped her over the edge because her family have stood by her and it's their grandchild that's been killed. So, you know, is there more to it? I know some of these women as well may have suffered with postnatal depression and, and something may have pushed these women over the edge. So I, I, I did wonder about that, yeah. If that's, if she's been really, really mentally. Murder accused mother suffered acute stress. Don't nobody give a F-U-C-K what she was suffering with. I'm not even like acute stress. What is that supposed, is that headline supposed to make people be like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, no, I don't care. <laughs> like, uh, so what? <laughs> I, I did wonder about that, yeah, if that's, if she's been really, really mentally unwell. But then it's, then you think, well, so putting it in the bag and putting it in the bin, like it is a piece right, of rubbish. Right, you did a, a lot. really sinister and sick thing to do. So somewhere you are deranged. One of the most extraordinary things about style is that women who've murdered babies or children are incarcerated in a prison where some convicted mothers are allowed to raise their own kids while serving time. Really weird juxtaposition, isn't it? The uniqueness of style is that you can have a child killer located on a unit not far away from, you know, a, a mother and baby unit. Children style is one of six those. prisons in the UK that has a unit dedicated we to heard pregnant about this women and mothers before, who've recently right? given birth. I think the concept of a mother and baby unit to most people would seem really bizarre. And on the surface, it is bizarre, you know, to have a child in prison. However, the nature of women is that they get pregnant and they have children. And just because you're pregnant or you have children does not mean you, you haven't got an addiction problem or you haven't committed a crime. The mother and baby unit at Style now houses mums and babies up to two years old. It's always full. And when Sue babies was sent to prison to for drug-related offences in 2002, she could only hope she'd get a place. I was 17 weeks pregnant when I arrived in style. I think the thought of going into labour on the wing terrified me. You know, just being in that cell and- Are they trying to hide Sue's to voice? Say to me, me child and, and she's, Growing up, you know, oh yeah, you were born in a cell. She wasn't. She was born in a hospital. 
I eventually. I think it'll be, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of cool, like a little bit. Like, if I was born in a cell, like, I was born in the darkness. I didn't have to become, like, like a Bane situation. You know, like Bane. All right. We went on to mother and baby units, quite a relaxed atmosphere. There's all sterilizers and stuff in the kitchen. And then you've got your washroom. You know, it's not a cell door. But this, this like furthers my point even more. Like there's women in prison that are taking care of their children. When, But these women out here on the streets have the nerve to not take care of their kids. Something like... Like it's a wooden, it's a wooden door with a window in it. You know, no settees downstairs with big scatter cushions and a big TV in a unit, and obviously prams are provided and stuff like that, so you can take them for a walk around the avenues and whatnot when you've had your child. Having seen the babies being walked around in buggies, me personally, it's really difficult to wrap my head around seeing young children in prison. Because it doesn't matter what you say, there's still a big gate, there's still a big wall, there's still a fence, you know. These children are in prison. Some people would say, well, mothers shouldn't be sent to prison. Babies shouldn't be in prison. Yes, I can see where people come from, because the babies didn't see normal life. The babies that style then never saw men. They never heard traffic noise. They never saw mm. animals. So it wasn't normal in that mm. respect. But to know that the babies, they were well cared for, they were mm. loved, I think it is actually a good service. Did you have nannies? that take the children for walks out the prison gates so that they can get used to sounds and cars and, you know, because they don't hear things like dogs barking or anything like that, do they? So they, they try and normalise it for the babies. Well, I think it would probably affect the babies more if they were separated from their mother for the first 18 months of their life than if... Hold on, let's double check. HMP Birmingham, HMP Whitmore, HMP Full Southern, HMP Franklin... Pentonville, which one is this? HMP Norwich. Oh, okay. And HMP Norwich was the one that we seen with the families behind bar. That's why it seemed so familiar. Because this part was like in there. They spent the first 18 months of their life um, with them in a room in, in, in a prison. If you're on a mother and baby unit, that's an incredibly privileged place to be. You know, there are very, very limited places or an, an absolute premium. So you agree to abide by a set of behavioural rules by being located on the mother and baby unit. You got into trouble. They threatened to take your tally off you on the wing and go on base it. But if you're pregnant and you're getting threatened to take the baby off you, if, you, if you've got a place on the mother and baby unit and you put a foot out of place, That's the baby's going. I've known women who've had to hand babies out on visits, like passing the baby over the table like a cup of tea. Like all inmates at Style, if you're caught breaking the rules inside the prison, you'll be punished. But if you toe the line, you'll be rewarded for good behaviour. Across all prisons, whether it's male or female, you have a privileged system, basic standard and enhanced. And every prisoner comes into prison on what we call standard regime. So that is a standard set of privileges. So that will uh, determine how many visits they can have, certain access to jobs, how much they're allowed to spend in the canteen every week, how much private cash they're allowed. Wages are about seven pound. I think it's £12.50 of private cash that you get sent in. But if you work hard, if you um, conform to the rules and the regulations, you... <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Like, out of all the prison documentaries, the UK always got the best food. So I can't, I ain't even gonna say that. Like, the, the salad is green, it look fresh, the rolls look hot, buttered. You know what I'm saying? It look good in here. 
You um, conform to the rules and the regulations. You can be put forward to become an enhanced prisoner. They're out longer, they get more to spend in the canteen, they get an extra visit, they have their TV, they have a PlayStation. Quite hard to get unenhanced. Being unenhanced is like, you are very good. Not so much as you kiss people's asses, but you're, you're more better at playing the system. At the bottom, you have basic regime. Basic is for the naughty girls, the ones that don't conform, who are always getting into trouble, who refuse to work if they've been found with drugs on them or mobiles, etc. They'd be put on basic. Lowest amount of cash, the lowest visiting orders, no TV, for example. They'd spend a lot of the time behind their door. Their whole sort of regime is, is restricted. But despite the risk of going on basic, Inmates at Style constantly break the rules, much, you know. especially when it comes to contraband, which is, is traded in secret and in ingenious ways. Even Baking soda? in the tiniest hem of a jacket, there would be packets of cocaine, heroin, cannabis. People go as low as actually putting it in the baby's nappies. Every morning at style, whether on the wing or in the houses, you'll be woken up for breakfast at around 7am before you begin a full day's work. The daily routine for an inmate at style would be unlock at about 8 o'clock. Then you'd start work at about half past 8. Convicted must work, so that's how they earn money. Jobs at style, you could do gardens, kitchens, cleaners, wing cleaners, house cleaners. The best jobs to get would be orderly jobs. You mean you could clean the governor's corridor, that would be an orderly job, because it'd make you more chances of getting unenhanced. Going to work at style not only offers you regular income, it gives you and other inmates prime opportunity to put your earnings to good use. When they go to work or coming back uh, from work, there would be officers lining the route to watch for the passing uh, cigarettes, tobacco, drugs, because this is the opportunity when they're mixing with the different prisoners from different units to exchange things. Free flow is when you unlock to work and you've got like basically 15 minutes to get to your workplace. And in that 15 minutes, you've got... You know what this reminds me of? Like a live-in like dorm, like a dorm where you can't go nowhere. <laughs> it's like a dorm of high school or, or college. So either go and meet who you get in your um, tablets or drugs off. So you pretty much have to get all you, your wheeling and dealing done. I know people are amazed at how drugs get in. You know, I spent 27, 28 years trying to fight drugs from coming into jails. But as soon as you shut one door, you know, another one opens. Drugs coming into the prison. It's a forever battle. They'll figure out a new way, you'll figure that way out, and then they'll figure out another new way, you'll figure that way out. It's just evolution of every time. It was almost on a daily basis. It is a constant battle, but when you think that drugs inside a jail are worth three, four times what they're worth outside. So it's, it's big business for somebody inside, for sure. If somebody's going to court tomorrow, they will swallow the drugs today in a condom, cling film, balloon, or whatever, and pass it in prison. It like, was quite common for drugs to be passed on visits. Um, there was numerous occasions where drugs were hidden in babies' cribs and, you know, in carry cots and things. People... Now, see... ...go as low as actually putting it in the baby's nappies. Now, see, this is a different level of drug addict or addiction. Like, if you put, like, you're willing to risk it all at this point. Even hidden in the tiniest hem of a jacket, there would be packets of cocaine, heroin, cannabis. 
I can remember one female prisoner whose mother... In the hem of the jacket? They, <laughs> they putting all that in there? They put seven class A's in the hem of their jacket. Jackets be hemmed up, starched up, so they can keep a pocket. That's tough. Mother used to send her flowers in um, with drugs in the stems of the flowers. One of the latest things is spraying drugs onto pages in books so that they can sniff it. I've seen drugs in dead pigeons. Oranges injected with drugs. Tennis balls filled with polo mints with the drugs poked down the hole. One woman um, on visits had See, um, so a little bit of like a fishing nylon tied to her front teeth. And as she pulled it up, all these drugs came up from her stomach. You know, unreal, unbelievable. But there is one method above all others that women used. And we can say it, we can sit here and be like, oh, it ain't that serious. But to them, you know, you know, drugs in, in prison is, is three times as much profit when you sell them in there. It's like very lucrative in there, very lucrative business. To smuggle in drugs. But it's not worth putting down your baby's diaper. Like, that's too much. Without getting caught. It's known by the inmates as crutching. Crutching is quite a common way. Putting it up that meow. Way for women My bad. to bring drugs in. They will hide it in the vagina and they will bring it in in that way. It wasn't uncommon for the women that were serving shorter sentences to get out. They could be returning back in three or four weeks and they would come in with, with drugs secreted on them. You know, you can't perform internal searches on women. I've clutched drugs before, yeah. The but boss case, here. They take you for a strip search. So if you had pills like Valium tablets or, you know, foil, or in lighters. I once knew a girl to crutch a mobile phone and a charger. So, yes. The Some charger are, too? Are well known for being the jail's drug dealers. I know one lady that gets out, plugged up straight away, because she knows she's going to come back in again. So she'll come back in with ounces of spice, ounces of heroin, and supplying the wing for weeks on end. I know she didn't just say what I This is the heroin. And we'll come back in with ounces of spice. Ounces of heroin. Ounces of spice and ounces of heroin. She ain't got no walls. She ain't got no walls. Breaking news. That's crazy. And supplying the wing for weeks on end. I would have known women who come in with stuff inserted and they've still got stuff. Three months later, they brought that much stuff in. One girl can store like a chipmunk. Seriously. She does it every time she's in and people see her they're made up. Like Sue, the majority of inmates who arrive at Style are already addicted to drugs. I was just addicted to heroin and crack cocaine. Um, I was prescribed methadone. And once work. crap came into my life, mm. when I was 26, mm. I could never really find the strength to put it down and leave it alone. I'd always go back to it. Um, you know, it's, it, that, that was really hard to overcome. That crack hit different, don't it? I wouldn't know, but the, the way she just described it, she almost described it as Jesus. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's the same, like... Like, am I wrong? Like, listen to what she said. Go back. Press, like, I'll wait. And look how she just described that. That's tough. Many others at Style become addicted to drugs once inside. Former inmate Brenda had never touched them before starting her life sentence for murder. I went in prison when I was 17, and because I was kind of naive, to the, to the situation and didn't know what was going on. Six months in, I started taking heroin. I remember <clears throat> first taking heroin um, in the roll up, someone made it for me. Um, and I will always hate that person for giving me my first taste of heroin because they shouldn't have. But at the time I did my them, so really I can't blame them. But it just took everything away. 
Even if it was just for a few hours, it made me sick, but it was nice. Uh, I wanted it as, as much as I could. Yeah, some women are worse than others for running round, trying to get drugs. One time, somebody threw themselves off the two years ago because you know, she couldn't get her app. That's, you know, the extent that some women will go to for drugs because there's, there's nothing else for them to do. I would say that drugs are certainly one of the most prevalent um, issues within, within a female prison. I've come across uh, cannabis, cocaine, heroin, spice, LSD, the little smiley face stickers, you name it, probably I've seen it. My time at Style, it was predominantly... The little smiley face stickers, is she talking about, um... Oh my God, what's the smiley face? I forgot what they call it. Mm. The um, heroin that was being used and, and coming through, crack, uh, cocaine used to come through quite often as well. And that was the sort of one we were, we were always worried about because that tended to sort of ramp up the behavior, ramp up the aggression, you know, and it would, it would cause fights within the prison, you know, who was gonna get it, who, who, who owed who what, and it was, you know, a dog eat dog sort of world. With addiction ripe in side style, drugs are in high demand and they're valuable so there will always be the potential for violence. It was the cause of quite some quite really serious, nasty assaults. You know, if a woman was believed to have come in with drugs secreted inside her, it wasn't unheard of for other prisoners to pin her down and internally search her and retrieve those drugs. They called it... Describe it one more time now. Ida, it wasn't unheard of for other prisoners to pin her down and internally search her. That's insane. So if y'all got the word that you, so you had to be low key if you was doing that because not only are the guards on you, the women in there is gonna pin you down and and wrestle with your your meow and get it out. That's that's and retrieve those drugs. They called it decrotching, which is de quite a brutal There's a name. term. Um, but it was a quite a brutal thing to do. One time a girl got decrutched in style on the wing by a couple of women. Um, they basically held her down, um, I believe four of them, and one of them put a gl rubber glove on and put a hand inside her. Privates. An entire hand though? Like, like. And got the drugs out herself where she'd crutched them. Uh, I believe it ended up in somebody getting done or nearly getting charged with rape. There was, you know, occasionally implements nearly. would be used, spoons, forks, anything to sort of retrieve those drugs from inside the person. So, you know, dealing dealing with those women afterwards was quite quite challenging the prevalence of drug use inside style might not be so surprising when you consider the makeup of the majority of the prison's population you're dealing with really damaged individuals you know that have had really tragic lives and really difficult circumstances a lot of them have been abused, whether sexually or physically, mentally. A lot of them have uh, come from broken homes. Unstable lifestyle, it's that chaotic lifestyle that seems to be quite prevalent amongst the population. And as I said, you know, mental health, drug use, the two together are an absolute recipe for disaster. The vast majority of the women at Style are suffering from some form of mental illness. And this is the cause of another of the prison's most serious problems. There is a very significant statistic that stuck in my mind about style. There had been 735 incidents of self-harm in the six months leading up to March 2018. That's an average of 125 self-harming incidents a month. When I got to style, I was absolutely shocked at the level 
and the severity of the self-harm. We're talking, you know, women that would hang themselves to the point of, you know, nearly dead. Women that would, you know, slice open their veins in their arms or cut their neck or cut their face. There was one woman who used to insert plastic cutlery and she had an open hole in her stomach that she used to insert plastic cutlery in. They used to swallow razor blades, swallow batteries, and this was day in, day out. It's constant. You can be walking up the wing. YouTube, that is clearly fake blood. This is a reenactment. No blood will be seeping under somebody's door, onto the wing where they've cut themselves to smithereens, and then they'll come out on the wing and they, they'll have been bandaged up. It's like a competition. Who's got the deepest cuts and the most cuts? And it's pretty much everywhere that. Most females who come into prison who self harm they often find it a way of release, to release the tension, to release the pressure, to, to make them feel better. And um, so they've used it outside if they're sort of a prostitute or they're being abused or it's a coping mechanism. I've seen women try and take their... Right, hold on, somebody said, what kind of competition is that? That ain't no kind... Everybody's a loser in that competition. Like, what, like what's going on? eyes out there's I've no seen winners them, um, literally bite a chunk in their wrist down to the bone and spit out the piece of flesh you know there are some serious um that's cap you didn't see that man you ain't seen nobody bait their arm off and spit it out disturbed and troubled women that that end up in prison Really, you, you, you need a wing dedicated to them kinds of people who are self-harming and who are who, who aren't do. well. So a lot of women in style with they mental need to be health talked problems to every day, that though. really shouldn't be in that environment. Locking up the alarming numbers of mentally unwell inmates is a huge challenge for style, and it's the reason behind a dark secret which has haunted the prison for years. Uh, I heard the alarm because my cell was so near this, next to the seg, I heard an officer slapping Sarah, trying to wake her up. They said if they'd got her straight to the hospital, they would have saved her. And they didn't. Each step along the way, they failed her. Did they not matter because they're criminals? Sarah who? Over the last 20 years, HMP Style has become known for an unprecedented number of deaths behind its bars. In the early 2000s, Style got a reputation for being the suicide capital of the British prison population. In a very few months, there were six suicides, an astonishing number for one prison. Part of the reason was that I almost said that's not too bad, but like that is bad. Any number of deaths is bad. The prison is being asked to cope with the mentally unstable, the deeply troubled. I remember the first suicide that happened when I was on weight wing, Sarah Campbell. Perhaps the most famous case of all was the death of an 18 year old from Malpas in Cheshire on only the second night of her sentence at Style. It would be fair to they say too? that Sarah Campbell had a troubled life. She descended into the use of drugs. Um, and finally, at the age of 18, fate led her to harass a man in the street, demanding money that she could use to pay for drugs. Unfortunately, the man she harassed was, was comparatively police. elderly. Oh. After being approached by Sarah, the man suffered a heart attack and died. Sarah was charged with manslaughter. What? She had the... What? Wait a minute. She went up to a dude, an elderly man in the, in the streets. And she, like, harassed him. Not strong armed him, not did, like, harassed him. Like, let me get some money, please, please, give me some money, please, like, please, like, that type of harass? Or, like, put their, like, 
she got charged for manslaughter because he had a heart attack while she was trying to panhandle? Like, I need the full story. That's great. That's a little bit wild. The blondest hair. She was so shy and timid, introverted. Like, you could just tell by looking at Sarah about on her state of mind. She had such bad scar marks, self-harm marks on her arms. Like, she definitely... So the, the signs were there that y'all needed to watch out. She shouldn't have been there. Or exactly that she shouldn't be. She shouldn't have been there in my eyes in the first place. That's just uh, unlucky of her. Like, un that's just bad. You know what I'm saying? She had all the classic characteristics of a style inmate. She was young, troubled, with drug problems, mental health problems, and had fallen into this pit of horror. I thought she was going into a psychiatric unit of style, but apparently it only, you know, it only held eight people and it was full. Sarah. Only held eight people and it was full. Was really upset because she realized she wasn't going to go into a psychiatric unit. She was banging her head on the wall and so they decided that they would put her in the segregation block. Just put her in the psychiatric unit. Uh, I heard the alarm because my cell was so near this next to the seg. I heard an officer slapping Sarah, trying to wake her up, slapping her so hard that I heard these slaps. She must have taken drugs and they took her off to Manchester Hospital. She was dying of the pills, you see. She was shouting and help. She wanted help. She took them and then shouted for help. And somebody must have gone. And ignored her. Anyway, the ambulance was so, so because the, they said if they'd got her straight to the hospital, they could have saved But they didn't. And they didn't. Eventually, there was an inquest into Sarah's death, and Style was held to account. The inquest was two years after Sarah died, and the verdict wasn't that she'd committed suicide. She died in the care of the state. Right. Hold on. And it was the jury, really. Hold on, HMP. Pentonville, Norwich. Wormwood. Okay. Just had to double check. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that brought that about. A similar thing happened a few years later in 2008 when a young woman called Lisa Marley on remand for assault also died in her cell at Style. As a young woman, she had mental health problems and she got involved with drugs at an early age. She once said to me that heroin made her forget um, and it was the only thing that ever made her forget. The worst possible thing for her was to be sat in a room on her own, hours and hours and hours, with her own thoughts. thoughts. I think that's probably what led her to do um, what she did, because it's clear from a prison diary that she was struggling. She was really, really frightened about being sentenced. They took her to the mental health part of the prison and put her in the safest cell in the prison, apparently which obviously wasn't. Oh, so she... The next day, she didn't want to come out of a cell. She kept telling them, I won't be here, I won't be here. And they didn't even ask the mental health nurse to talk to her or anything, just nothing. The inquest into Lisa Marley's death also... It, it sounds like y'all need to train y'all officers better on what to... The, 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 the pre-warning cursors and things of that nature. Like, y'all just not even paying attention. So ruled that Style Prison had failed her. 
They did. Lisa was on suicide watch. Uh, you can clearly see on the CCTV that one of the officers went to visit her at 10 past 12, uh, couldn't see her, admitted that she couldn't see her. Um, and in that incident, as far as I'm aware, the protocol is to go and get somebody else and go, go back inside. to the cell and get into the cell. Nobody went back to that cell for 20 minutes. Why? It just let down all the way through. You know, I mean, you just keep hearing of it again and again and again. When's it going to end, you know? 20 minutes is crazy, especially when you're supposed to be following protocol. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I'm going to follow protocol, but 20 minutes later, I can't see the prisoner who's on a mental... Who's on a... What's it called? The, 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 the mental... No, no, no. Suicide watch. We'll be back in 20 minutes. Can't see her, but 20 minutes is... She'll be all right. So you got to stop hiring these GameStop and ASDA employees. There can be no question that Style is asked to deal with exceptionally vulnerable, disturbed young women. But it would also be fair to say that the prison has failed on more than one occasion to offer its inmates the care that they should yeah. deserve. Yeah. Holly Daglish was a prison officer at Style for eight years. She doesn't accept that staff weren't trying to help these women. It's, it's difficult because Louis. Every suicide is, is tragic. Get a cat, they say. But I don't want people to think that staff weren't trying their absolute best for these women. I'll give you one example. One weekend we worked and there was, from the Friday night to the Monday morning, nine... Well, man, listen, uh, clearly all your staff is not on the same page. Some people might take their job more seriously than others, like with any job. But this is one of those jobs you really can't, you all gotta be on the same page, you know what I mean? 90 incidents of self-harm, 90. That's like, whether it be self-harm or attempted suicide, so ligaturing was very common, self-strangulation was very common. And you know, we were quite often running from one incident to the other, to the other. Right. You could have been spent, you know, five hours in a cell with Donna talking to her, trying to get her not to kill herself, not to self-harm, to, you know, try and resolve her issues. But you've got 14 other women that still need your attention. Get more stuff. There was one case where a woman, she'd hung herself from a, a light fitting, and but she'd also cut her face and cut her throat as well. So me and another officer went in and lifted her up and as she did as we lifted her up all her bodily fluids um let loose should we say and we were covered in blood excrement urine and we were still there we were still trying to save her life we were still lifting her up you know we didn't know where she was bleeding from we didn't know how long she'd been hanging are we supposed to applaud you for doing your job <laughs> but we were there you know we were there literally rolling around in it, trying to save this woman's life. And you literally don't think about yourself. You, you, your main concern is keep that woman alive. Do whatever you can do to keep them alive. And I genuinely believe for everyone, as tragic as they were, there was a hundred more saved. Because we had so many close calls. So, so many close calls. Um, yeah, but we don't remember those. We remember the ones you didn't successfully execute and save. You know, but that never got recognised. No, because you were doing your job. Nobody recognises when you're doing great in your job. And you're doing what you're supposed to do. It's a thankless job. It's only until, like, something goes wrong. But for many, the real issue is that prison's lifestyle and not the right places to send women who are mentally unwell. The officers, they're not, they're not mental health nurses. There's not enough mental health support. We were very undertrained to deal with what we were dealing with. 
that. We just have to do what we were presented with on a daily basis, and and whether that be self harm or violence or whatever. Um, but yeah, really, really challenging. It's a fact. Everyone remembers the prisoners who escaped, not the ones who served their time. It's the same thing with everything. We remember the bad, not the good. Challenging, <laughs> difficult. It's human nature. Complex. You know, mental health issues. We are asking staff to do we things. Remember this shocking. We are asking them staff to do it without a budget to do it effectively. And indeed, they didn't have the infrastructure to offer them the right help, the right therapy. Each year, there are many deaths in British prisons. But what brought Style into the spotlight was the fight of Sarah Campbell's mother, Pauline who believed the prison had killed her daughter. The prison had a legal duty of care to look after Sarah. I don't think her health problems were addressed adequately whilst she was in prison. Um, it is, after all, a prison and, and not a hospital. Um, I don't think prisons are equipped to deal with people who have um, mental health, ill health problems. Pauline couldn't forgive them and she couldn't forgive them because five other women had died as well she was right. just as angry about that 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 women were dying it wasn't safe it isn't safe for women in prison it isn't a safe place to send them i'll never forget a bomb going around every single prison um, every time there was a suicide, she'd be there with the picket outside, saying, stop it, stop the suicide, help the vulnerable, that Ooh, women good, sh man. shouldn't be held in places such as style when they were so vulnerable and were so much self harming She was, in fact, arrested 15 times for demonstrating outside prisons, and it made the rage against style even more intense. In the end, Pauline's persistence seemed to pay off. In the wake of Sarah Campbell's death and her mother's campaign, the government commissioned a report and suggested a whole string of improvements, including smaller units, better care, better staffing, better training. She was so But did it work? Did they actually do it? She was so happy. But Pauline soon realised that despite her efforts, no changes were going to be made. Yes, yeah, when they just said it they to make you be quiet. To pick things out of the course and report, and Pauline, I mean, Pauline realised it wasn't going to be put. Remembered with love, Sarah Elizabeth Campbell, aged 18 died on the 18th of January 2003. Her mother left broken hearted. She been 38. Pauline Campbell, aged 60 years, died 15th of May 2008, now at rest. R.I.P. Five years after daughter Seth. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I've seen some of this, but like not all of it. I think some of this is like recycled and they be reusing it in other Sarah died inside Style Prison. Her mother Pauline gave up her fight. In the summer of 2008, Pauline Campbell committed suicide herself. Dang. Very close to her daughter's grave. If there is one great memory about what the dangers of style are. It is those two suicides of mother and daughter, Pauline and Sarah Campbell. Not killed by style, that wouldn't be fair, but certainly victims of the system that style represents. Oh, I didn't even realize that was her mom when she was reading that, the lady was reading that headstone. I thought it was like another lady or something. Like, like grandma or something. Later, and not a lot has really changed. 
The suicide rate of style is roughly one a year in the last five years. Still the same things are still happening. Now, we were assured when we were at Lisa's inquest that this was going to be recommended that they had trained staff on the mental health unit. Um, and as far as I'm aware, that's Cap. not happened. Yeah, they capped to you. I just don't understand it. Why? Do they not matter because they're criminals? Currently, there are about 350 that, inmates at Style. And only around 40 or 50 women serving time for murder. The rest are mostly in for minor crimes caused by drugs and mental health issues. For them, style may represent a problem rather than a solution. Pauline was to say, and I think it's a wonderful quote, prisons, including style, are a dumping ground for abused, oppressed and desperate women who need help, not punishment. The majority of crime committed by women is not violent crime. And therefore, we should be able to look at some other way of dealing with these mentally ill, distressed, abused women. I think the judges find it easier to send them to prison and think, oh, it's not society's problem. Let jail do you deal with it, you know? because they're the scene as a criminal. Judges sometimes have no option. You know, what do you do with a woman that has, you know, shoplifted the local Tesco 70 times? I'm not sure that incarcerating somebody for a month, for six weeks, for, you know, three... If she's robbed the local Tesco for 70, 70 times, what is the Tesco doing wrong? ban her stop her from coming in like as soon as you see her like she should be on the wall and back this person is banned do not let this person in and like what is the employees just turning the other cheek three months is any use nor ornament what can you do in that time with that person can you get them off drugs unlikely will they stay off when they go out unlikely unfortunately the kind of work that's needed with these women takes time, commitment, resources, money, and it's just not popular with the general public. You know, taxpayers' money going on, you know, helping women rehabilitate. It's just, it's not a vote winner. I think society just needs to get its head round change and spend the money more wisely and That's not true. look at non-violent short sentence crimes as as a right to teach women a lesson we as a society have never worked out what it is we want to do with female prisoners we are incredibly ambivalent about it whether it's a sex worker a drug addict someone who's mildly involved in the drug trade we don't know we don't seem to distinguish and that's what style crystallizes it's a fudge. Everything's just shoved together. Literally. We're asking style no matter to what the prison look is after or anything. things that we as a society don't want to think about. And that is not a criticism of style. That's a criticism of society for asking it to do things because we don't want to think about them. This year, independent inspectors commended HMP style as a clean and safe environment with impressive work to support the most vulnerable. The wider prison estate has also transformed in recent decades, with far fewer women in custody, greater mental health support, and work to help women turn away from crime. Of course this prison spokesman's gonna say that. Like, well, then, nobody's listening to your word. We, it's heavily, you heavily favor to go that way. Like, no, send somebody independently in there to watch over it and look. Anyway, tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm good.